In this video, we're going to talk about how to tell if a molecule or if an ion is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. So let's talk about the conditions that must be met for a molecule to be aromatic. So first, that molecule, it has to be cyclic. Every atom in that molecule must have a p orbital. So therefore, you can't have any sp3 carbons. You could have an sp2 or an sp carbon, but it can't have any sp3 carbons. Now the molecule has to be conjugated, so the pi electrons have to be free to move around in the ring. And so all of the p orbitals, they must be able to overlap with adjacent p orbitals. The molecule must be planar. It has to be flat. It has to have a 2D structure. And it has to follow Huckel's number, or Huckel's rule, for n plus 2. So when n is 0, you get 2. When n is 1, you get 4 plus 2, which is 6. So when n is 2, you get 10. When n is 3, you get 14. And these represent the number of pi electrons in the cyclic ring structure of the molecule in order for it to be aromatic. Now let's look at the next column. The conditions for anti-aromaticity is very similar to aromaticity. The molecule must be cyclic. There can't be any sp3 carbons. It has to be conjugated. The pi electrons have to be free to move in the ring. It has to be planar. But it doesn't have to follow Huckel's rule. In fact, it follows 4n. So when n is 1, you get 4. When n is 2, you get 8. When n is 3, you get 12. And so if you have a molecule with 4 pi electrons or 8 pi electrons with these conditions met, then it's going to be anti-aromatic. Now, if one of these conditions are not met, it's automatically non-aromatic. So if the molecule, let's say, is a linear molecule, if it's not cyclic, then it's non-aromatic. If you do have an sp3 carbon, in the ring, it's not going to be aromatic. If it's not conjugated, it's not aromatic. Let's say if it's a non-planar, if it has a 3D shape as opposed to a 2D structure, it's not aromatic. Or if it has an odd number of pi electrons, such as 3, 5, 7, 9, it's going to be non-aromatic. Now, you need to know that aromatic compounds are very stable. Anti-aromatic compounds are unstable. And non-aromatic compounds are just like normal, they're regular. So aromatic compounds are more stable than non-aromatic compounds. And non-aromatic compounds are more stable than anti-aromatic compounds. Now I'm going to give you a series of molecules and ions, and I want you to determine if they're aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. So let's start with our most common example, benzene. Is benzene aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? Benzene is cyclic, it's conjugated, and it doesn't have any sp3 carbon atoms. All of the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized, which means each carbon atom has a p orbital where the pi electrons can move. Now every double bond contains a pi bond, and one pi bond contains two pi electrons. So benzene has two, four, six pi electrons. So therefore it follows Huckel's rule where aromatic compounds can have two, six, ten, or fourteen pi electrons. And benzene has six. So we could say that benzene is an aromatic compound. And so all of the pi electrons are free to move in the ring. If we want to, we can draw the resonance structure of benzene. So the resonance structure looks like this. You just gotta move those double bonds. So because benzene is aromatic, it is very, very stable. Now what about this molecule? One, three, butadiene. Is it aromatic, anti-aromatic, or not aromatic? Well, 
this molecule is conjugated. A conjugated molecule has alternating double and single bonds. So here we have a double bond, single bond, double bond. So it's conjugated. The only problem with this is, is that it's not cyclic. It's not in a ring. And so because it's not cyclic, it can't be aromatic or anti-aromatic. Automatically, it's non-aromatic. And so that's the answer for this one. Now what about our next example? Cyclobutadiene. Is it aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? So this molecule is cyclic. It's conjugated. We have alternating single and double bonds. Every carbon atom has a p orbital because all the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized. And it's planar. It has a, a 2D structure. So is it going to be aromatic or anti-aromatic? So now let's count the number of pi electrons. So this is 2 and 4. So it has 4 pi electrons. This doesn't follow Huckel's rule, which is 4 and plus 2 for aromatic compounds. It doesn't have this number. Rather, it follows the rule for anti-aromatic compounds, which has the numbers 4, 8, 12, and so forth. So because cyclobutadiene has 4 pi electrons, it's anti-aromatic, which means it is not stable. Here's another example. So this molecule is called naphthalene. It has two rings. And what do you think about the aromaticity of this molecule? Is it going to be aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? So we can see that it's cyclic. It's conjugated. We have alternating single and double bonds. All of the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized. And let's count the number of pi electrons. So this is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this follows Huckel's rule of 4n plus 2. So since we have 10 pi electrons and all of the conditions for aromaticity are met, naphthalene is an aromatic compound. Let's try this example. So this molecule that I'm currently drawn is called phenanthrene. So do you think this molecule is going to be aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? So we can see that it's cyclic, conjugated, planar. It has all of those characteristics. So all we need to do is count the number of pi electrons. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So is it aromatic or anti-aromatic? Let's see if it follows Huckel's rule. When n is 0, we get 2, and then keep adding 4. So the next number is 6, 10, and 14. So these are one of the aromatic numbers. So since we have 14 pi electrons, and all of the other conditions are met, we could say that phenanthrene is an aromatic compound. Now for those of you who might be studying for the organic chemistry final exam. I have a video that can help you and it's on my Patreon page. If you go to patreon.com slash math science tutor, you can access that page. And if you scroll down, there's a lot of other videos I have here too, but let's say if you're taking the first semester of organic chemistry, I have a six hour video that can help you with that. If you decide to become a patron, now, on YouTube, I have a free two-hour trailer version of this video. But if you want the entire six-hour video, you can access it here or on Vimeo as well. And for those of you who are taking the second semester of organic chemistry, I have an eight-hour video that you can access as well. And there's some other stuff here that you can find too. If you're taking Gen Chem or Physics, I have stuff on that as well. So that's it, just in case you're interested. For the next example, let's discuss cyclopentadiene. 
So do you expect this molecule to be aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? So this molecule is cyclic. We do have conjugation. We have some alternating single and double bonds. However, it's not completely conjugated. Notice that we have an sp3 carbon here. So that carbon atom, it doesn't have a p orbital where the pi electrons can resonate through. And so as a result, it's not going to be aromatic or anti-aromatic. So this molecule is non-aromatic. So there's nothing special about it right now. 